BioBalance HealthCast, episode 201, Managing Weight Loss. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Dr. Mop and I are continuing discussion about the diet and weight loss programs that she is now offering in tangent or in cooperation with the hormone replacement therapies uh, that she offers at her practice, BioBalance Health. And we started this conversation in our most recent podcast. Uh, we're talking about a lot of things, in particular, the fact that you have to do a proactive, cognitive, personal investment. You've got to decide... I want to do the things I need to do to lose weight. If you make that decision and invest in it, then there are some pretty uh, obvious and and sequential steps that they can guide you through to help you be successful in reaching your weight loss goal. And keeping it. And and keeping it. Not just reaching and say, okay, now I can feast and eat all this crap because I've gotten my weight loss. (laughs) Oh, uh, darn. Which is one of the things we talked about. And and it's a strategy people follow, you know, as a carrot and stick to, to reach their goal. But we want, our goal is to help you get healthy and stay healthy for the rest of your life so that you have the maximum quality of life that you're going to be able to have even as you age and eventually die. So we continue to try to present you with that invitation. Come and look at these things. One of the things that you look at when somebody comes in for a consultation for diet and weight loss issues uh, in tandem with their hormone replacement therapy Mm -hmm is you look at their blood tests and you want to find out about the different hormones that are known to contribute to weight gain, right. of which testosterone is not one. No. <laughs> Let's just no. Start Testoster- with testosterone is not one. First, we look, at, we look at blood work for several things. One, we look for evidence of medical illness that, contrib- or that can be made worse by being overweight. Mm-hmm. So we look for the problem. We look for hormone deficits because as we get older, over 40, we lose certain hormones that need to be replaced. So that's what we do with our testosterone or estradiol or thyroid. So then we look for the hormones that are helping the weight gain, Okay. that are causing trouble by by being a negative for us and making us gain more weight. Now, one of the hormones that when it is excessive that help, makes us gain weight is cortisol. Well, and that's an important point. It's not that the presence of these hormones is causing it. It's the imbalance of the hormones. There's too much or too little. Yeah, it's not the presence. We all have cortisol. It's, right. it's too much cortisol. Okay. So when the cort- our cortisol is elevated, and it can be elevated because we have an adrenal problem, a tumor or something, but more likely it's elevated because we're stressed out. Like yeah. medical students and medical residents have very high cortisol levels and are usually puffy and swollen. Either that or they're... S- They're so poor they don't have any money to eat and they're skinny. But, you know, so, but generally stress causes our cortisol to go up. And when it is elevated, then we have an increased hunger, our blood sugar goes up, and we gain weight. So fat, we gain fat, not muscle. For years I worked with school teachers who were constantly, I mean, it's a high stress job. And they were living on chocolate, cigarettes, and caffeine. And that's. And that just made everything worse. It did. And they and, put on weight. And they put on weight. And and yeah. lots of nurses are very stressed. And so and they and put on weight. And lots of nurses are overweight. Yeah, very caretakers mm-hmm. seem to um, internalize their stress. And they're taking care of everyone, but they're, they can't, don't take care of themselves. And I am one of them. So that's one of those things where we internalize our stress. Cortisol goes up. That's one of the telltale signs that I can see in someone who looks perfectly calm that they internalize their stress and, and it makes them sick. So when I have... Somebody with an elevated cortisol, after I determine that it's not from something that's a, a medical illness, then I uh, or stress. When I realize or I can determine that it's stress, then I I use something that is not a prescription. It's called Endodrin, which is an adrenal supplement. It's called a glandular kind of supplement, but I give them a small amount of adrenal um, orally every day in the morning, and that shuts down that high level and the spikes of their cortisol. So it feeds back to their brain and stops the hormone that is stimulating the cortisol from our brain. So it calms us down, calms people down, and makes them have their cortisol go down to normal. And then that particular issue that's causing them to gain weight or causing them to gain fat 
is gone. So then we, we take all these roadblocks out of the way that are singularly individual to that patient. So we also see that um, patients often have aldosterone issues, especially women. Aldosterone is also a hormone from the adrenal gland, also stress-related. Aldosterone makes your blood pressure go up. You retain a lot of salt, right. okay? So we use spironolactone for women. For men, it's blood pressure medicine or diuretics, but, but it's, in general, it is uh, spironolactone for women, and that's a, it is a diuretic, but it drops the aldosterone and decreases the swelling and decreases the retention of salt. Right. So... That, that helps calm our adrenal down as well and decrease the water problem. Right. What, you have to drink a lot of water to get fat out of your body, but if the water crosses over into your tissues and you're just swollen, you aren't getting the fat out of your body. It's just collecting in your subcutaneous tissues and you look swollen and dimpled. So that's one of the ways we get rid of that. If your insulin's elevated, insulin goes up before it goes down. Pre-diabetes is a high insulin and an insulin that goes up anytime you eat and an insulin that is overreacting. So when you have insulin and, and you eat and too much of it, it can't get into the cells because you have insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. And then it makes fat with your food. Not energy, you're tired, but all of your food goes to fat and it's stored. Because the insulin is too high, the blood sugar is, is can't get into cells. So we make you more insulin sensitive with the metformin we talked about, at, and uh, with the Victoza. So those are two medications that we can right. use for that. But not always does that show up, right. and we still use those medications for weight loss. Okay. Prolactin, prolactin is something that it can be up because of uh, stress or antidepressant drugs or antipsychotic drugs, and it's the hormone of lactation for, uh, for women. But it can also go up in men and women from these different reasons and also from smoking marijuana can make it go up, which causes weight gain. It causes us so to what be... So it causes man boobs? Uh-huh. In people who smoke marijuana, yeah. Yeah. Excess, it, excessive it increases, amounts of, of marijuana. Right. Excessive yeah. amounts of marijuana cause right. prolactin to go up, cause, cause men to have uh, erectile dysfunction and causes them to have more estrone. Right. And estrone is the bad estrogen and causes breast development. And, and that's a painful condition. For yeah, me. it is. And it, it and stretches you out where you aren't supposed to be stretched out. Mm -hmm. It's very pain. It's painful. Mm -hmm. And it is something that is can, can be a risk factor for male breast cancer. So right. we don't want people to right. have that. We can use a, um, a dopamine agon agonist called Parlidel. And um, that, that's a medication that we can use. There are so, several other medications for elevated prolactin. We have to prove that it is. Right. I mean, we can just right. tell so you. There's not just not weight just smoke, gain and bag muscles and yeah, marijuana, and marijuana. Or we could yeah. tell you to, uh, I mean, we would tell, I would tell you that. But if it's due to something else, we have to rule out the fact that it might be due to a pituitary tumor. Right. If it's not that, and, and that has a specific level that we, we entertain that issue. But if it's just mildly elevated, it can still give you the weight gain So and, and the man boobs. So once we determine it's benign, then we can decrease the uh, prolactin with a um, dopamine agonist. Estrone, estrone is really the last one I'm going to talk about. And estrone is old man, old lady, estrogen, testosterone helps shut that down in most people. Not everybody. Some people have a, um, a genetic defect that causes testosterone to even make more estrone. So we have to, we find that out early in the pellet process, and we stop that. But for other people, if you take DIM, which is a supplement, then that can decrease your estrone. Or if it's really high, we can give something called a Rimidex, and that decreases estrone. So that decreases belly fat pretty fast, mm -hmm. decreases excessive breast development in both men and women. So we can use that blocker. It's like an enzyme blocker. And we can cause patients to help lose weight in the places they want to lose it if this is excessive. So that's why it's important to do blood work. We can find some of the reasons that you may so be having trouble. Some of the reasons may be due to physiological changes or imbalances, mm -hmm. deficits that lead directly to fat gain and weight gain. Mm -hmm. But Many That's why a doctor not, has to look. So you have to look, mm -hmm. and you have to eliminate those as things that we have to treat or consider. Otherwise, you'll just be frustrated if yeah. you go to Jenny Craig or you go to one of the yeah. just weight loss places that just 
you, you buy food from them, basically. Right. You're going to be very frustrated because it's not going to work not like it should work. Real problem. And problems. they haven't and they haven't investigated right. what's going on with you, but they're not physicians, and that's not their job. Right. No, they're but, selling supplements. But this is this food. is yeah, this is something different. But this is something so, that I think many people need. So people come to you for a medical evaluation and a diet program. Once once you go through your checklist and you say, well, these things are either causing.